Last night, the Green and Gold got a taste of their own medicine. Houston hammered out four big flies from four different Astros, and it proved to be the difference as the Strohs cruised to a Game 1 victory at Minute Maid Park. Tonight, the A's will regroup and send Jeff Samarja to the hill. The recent acquisition for the Athletics has been great, including his last outing, where he dominated the Astros going eight strong innings. A's take on the Astros. Game 2 is next. It's game two of the series from Minute Maid Park in downtown Houston last night. The Astros beat the A's 7-3, so Jeff Samarja and the A's will try to even up this series at a game apiece tonight. So it's game two of the three-game series. It's the Oakland A's and the Houston Astros coming up right here on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Jeff Samarja will be making his fifth start for the A's and Ray his last start was his best, and he's been pretty good in all four of them. You know, they got it for a big-game pitcher. Well, it's a big game tonight because the A's want to get back on the winning track, and he did that last Thursday, helping the A's win the series against these Houston Astros. The great thing about him, you see his numbers, eight innings. He never wants to come out of a game. He wanted to stay in that game against the Astros last Thursday. But I thought the most impressive thing was pitch number 101 was thrown at 96 miles per hour. Great sinker, two-seam fastball. He's got the slider. He knows how to pitch. Well, if the Astros are going to beat you, they probably need to hit. <laughs> a home run or two or yeah, three or three. four and that was the case last night but they're really pretty one dimensional as an offense and they hit mistakes how about this mistake a high fastball Chris Carter went up the ladder and Jesse Chavez said I did not think he's going to do that and the change up right in the wheelhouse of Jason Castro that put the Astros ahead but this one was a long one Kraus upper deck a cutter that didn't cut another mistake it ended up as a home run and then Dominguez came in against Otero and he hit uh, that thing out there the train was with all the oranges on it, way up on the tracks. Four home runs last night, enough to beat the Athletics by four runs. So the A's, again, need pitching tonight. Samarja's the best guy to do it. The Astros have hit 115 home runs. The A's have hit 110. So it's Samarja against the veteran right-hander Scott Feldman. That's your pitching matchup for game two of this series. Up next, we'll head back to the guys in the studio for a sports update, and then back here to the ballpark for lineups at first pitch.
Jessica Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box for the new Jalapeno Ranch or Barbecue Ultimate Cheeseburgers at participating restaurants and by Toyota. Number one in NPG, durability and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. We're at Minute Maid Park in downtown Houston getting set for game two of the three game series. And as we speak, the Astros take the field. And they will be sending the veteran right hander Scott Feldman to the mound tonight. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. The roof is closed. It's 83 degrees, humidity 80%. And well, this afternoon it rained extremely hard here in Houston. Is, is scheduled to to rain and it did. Clouds outside. If you look through the glass windows out in left field, you see the lightning come in the hotel oh, windows. It was it was uh, <laughs> crackling and raining hard. <laughs> Let's look at the lineup tonight for the Athletics. It starts with Jaso the DH, Lowry at short, Suspitus in left, Moss in right, Donaldson at third, Vote at first, Norris in, is the catcher. And Josh Reddick's going to play center field tonight. We'll talk about that. And then Eric Sogard is the second baseman. Scott Feldman on the mound for the Astros. Signed a big contract during the offseason as they wanted to bring a veteran in, a little leadership in their starting rotation, but he's facing a team that he has not fared very well against in the past, and the A's hopes that is the continue way tonight because in his start last Thursday against the Athletics, 170 pitches in five and a third innings. He did walk five, one intentional, but did struggle. The A's worked him very well, and they hope to do the same tonight as they scored six runs off him. Of course, a couple of those, a result of a grand slam by Moss off Bass. The runs on the board for Feldman, but good pitcher, not overpowering. Uses the whole plate. Good, good split finger fastball. The defense for the Astros tonight is Mark Krause in left, Kike Hernandez in center, Robbie Grossman in right, Matt Dominguez, Marwin Gonzalez, Jose Altuve, and John Singleton is your infield third to first with Jason Castro once again behind the plate. So we are set for baseball with the A's trying to even up the series. The Astros used the long ball last night and beat the A's. The Athletics continue to have the best record in the major leagues. 37 consecutive days they've been able to say that. They're 65 and 40. And of course, a game and a half lead over those Angels. A line drive, and it's caught by Singleton in the air. One pitch, one out. So Jaso not waiting around. Hit it hard, but he's retired. Umpires tonight. Doug Eddings is calling balls and strikes. Corey Blazer at first. Jim Joyce at second. Marvin Hudson is over at third. There's your crew chief, Mr. Jim Joyce. So one away, and Lowry steps in. Lowry takes the first pitch strike. A game and a half lead for the A's in the AL West, and... The Angels are starting a series tonight in Baltimore, and that game is underway. In fact, it's 3-3 in the third inning. It's now, Weaver and Tillman. Yeah, our head of uh, the A's here in Houston on the East Coast uh, where the Orioles are hosting the Angels, beginning of that series. And three pitches. Lowry strikes out. So two away. And nothing wrong with it right down the middle with the fastball and a little tailing action as it came back a little bit towards the middle part of the plate. Jed Lowry a smile shaking his head as he goes back to dugout. But did not look like that bad of a pitch especially with the movement that Feldman has on his fastball. So here's Cespedes two quick outs here in the first. The Mariners are also starting a series on the East Coast, they're in Cleveland tonight. No score between the Mariners and the Indians in the fourth inning. So, game and a half back are the Angels. And those two teams, the A's and the Angels, the two best records in all of baseball. 
reminiscent of 2002 when the A's kept winning, but so did the Angels. Both ended up going to postseason. But at that time, the wild card winner had a chance for the five game series. That's not the case this year. And since 2012, since the second wild card was introduced to baseball. Just for this big swing rolls it foul. I mean, you got a bit of his foot. The four best records in all of baseball belong to American League teams. With the back foot of Cespedes. The A's. The Angels are one and two in best records in all of baseball. The Tigers are three. The Orioles are four. The Dodgers are five. One two pitch. Foul straight back to the screen. That Mariners game, it's Iwakuma and Bauer pitching matchups. But it's interesting with all the speculation of the trade rumors and Thursday being the trading deadline. See the, the best of the best, and there they are. As Scott mentioned, the four teams with the best records. But John Lester's name has surfaced as a possibility going to uh, Seattle, been going up in Washington. Boy, it sure sounds like he's going to get traded, doesn't it? Yes. Amazing. But you know, still, as we mentioned last night, unless the team that trades for him, you're going to have to give up a lot, but you almost have to be assured that you're going to sign him long term because you rent him for a couple of months. He ends up going back to Boston, which there is a possibility. That, that could be quite an acquisition and giving up a lot. Cespedes with a line drive toward the left field corner. It'll bounce off the wall, and Cespedes will have a double. And there's your left fielder, Krause playing so far off the line that anything to his right or left, it's a, a guaranteed double. Hanging breaking ball, and Cespedes went down and got it. Hooked it down the left field line, but Krause playing almost uh, just to the left of the Crawford boxes, but long way to go get the ball. You'll see him in the picture there. Look at where the ball is hit. He's in normal position. He might be able to cut it off to hold Cespedes to a single, but not where he is set up defensively. The A's will take it. So here's Moss. Moss hitting 260 with 23 home runs, 71 RBIs. Shift is on. And that one's hit high in the air, shallow left. Kraus comes in. And Kraus has it, side retired. So the A strand Cespedes is at second. Jeff Samarja is set to go to work. No score after half an inning. Against Samarja. Four home runs last night for the Astros, and this is their lineup Altuve, Gonzalez, Carter, Castro, Kraus, Singleton, Dominguez, Grossman, Hernandez. And as I mentioned, the last start, the last win for Jess Samarja came against the Astros last Thursday at the Coliseum, and he'll try to duplicate that tonight. He went eight strong innings, did get a lot of run support, and I think it was reported that he got more runs in one game than he did in about six starts pitching for the Cubs. 
13 runs in the game, but the eight strong innings, the only blemish, the one run, a Chris Carter home run. Not a surprise as he has been hitting the ball well, but that was the only mistake. Jeff Samarja made, if you want to say it was a mistake, but he's pitched very well. A lot of very good pitches. And he wants to continue that dominance tonight. So the defense for the A's, Cespedes, Reddick, and Moss left center and right. Donaldson, Lowry, Sogard vote on the infield with Norris doing the catching. Josh Reddick out in center field. I guess you could say sort of new territory for him. The last time he played in center field was in September of 2012. But he's been out there some played a little bit out there with the Red Sox and then some with the A's and in the minor leagues he yeah. played a fair amount of center field. You know, kind of the biggest thing he's comfortable. And, and Cespedes was not very comfortable and I think as Bob Melman said just trying to get somebody into center field until Craig Gentry comes back from the DL or good news coming about Coco Crisp. We have put him out there. Or even Billy Burns might get a chance to start as a lefty will be pitching tomorrow. But uh, right now is Josh Reddick, who's a gold glove right fielder, and that should not be a problem for him playing in the center field. First pitch to Altuve is outside. Altuve 343 with four home runs and 32 runs batted in. The best batting average in all of Major League Baseball. Bounces one. But Donaldson guns it across. And that's the first out. So Marja has that hard sinker. Hard turbo sinker. Of course, good velocity, good fastball, hard slider, split finger fastball. And he'll use all of his pitches. He's smart enough to realize maybe that what caused him to have success last Thursday against these Astros, he will not change much. And why? Because he, he does have the pitches to be able to go right at these hitters. So one away for Marwin Gonzalez. Next to Marja and Felpin, the Astro starter, were teammates in Chicago last year. For a while, anyways. Feldman ended up being traded. That one's hit high to right field. Moss into the corner, and it is gone and hit the foul pole. You could hear it clanking. It's the foul pole and another home run for the Astros. Now well, we saw the home runs hit last night by the Astros, and how about a four seam fastball? Or at least the fastball did not do anything. Bell tie and Gonzalez hitting his fifth. That's the high towering fly ball that made it right into right to a foul pole. <laughs> so how about that? Four home runs last night, one in the first inning, second batter. And really, it, it really is simply a matter of the ball that went straight instead of maybe the two seamer, the sinker that he wanted to throw. Samarja gets the tough hitter. Altuve on a ground ball and it straightens out a fastball to Gonzalez. Here's Carter. Hey! Carter with the three run homer. So home run number 116 for the Astros, third most in the American League behind the Blue Jays and the Orioles. It's one and two now to Carter. Well, Marwin Gonzalez getting a chance to play every day as the shortstop. Numbers wise, seems to be doing all right. Just a bit inside. Well, they talked about when Dexter Fowler comes back that QK Hernandez might move back to the infield, his normal position, but who knows the way Gonzalez is playing. Porter might decide to keep it the same way defensively. They've had Hernandez come in from center field to play shortstop. It's the one game in Oakland. Good breaking ball and Carter swings and misses. So two outs here in the bottom of the first. Time now for Nissan Keys of the game for Jesse Marge to continue to pitch like an ace. One home run if that's the only one he gives up. 
That's an ace. Stay away from the Astros power. Well, forget it. They've already hit a home run. So they went right into the power with a four seam fastball or a straight fastball, but came back to the power hitting Carter, threw him a nice slider to get the strike out. He only gives up one. He's got a chance to win. And he's very capable of maybe being so upset with himself that he gave up the one that he didn't get up anymore. So one and zero to Castro, ten home runs, forty RBIs, two run homer last night. We told you the Astros fairly one dimensional. When they hit a home run, at least one home run in a game, they're thirty five and twenty eight. When they do not hit a home run, they're eight and thirty five. Sogard on the back end throws to first to side retired Marwin Gonzalez with a home run off the foul pole so it's the Astros one and the A's nothing after one. And here's our true story. It's brought to you by McDonald's. Athletics offense since the break. Those are your hot hitters. And then down at the bottom, he's averaging shade over six runs per game since the break. And remember, right before the break, Ray, they slowed down a little bit offensively, but they picked it up some. And he's overall lead the American League in. Total run scored 527 just ahead of the Angels. So Donaldson steps in against Scott Feldman. Feldman is a Bay Area guy. He grew up in Burlingame, went to College of San Mateo. So he's probably got some friends and family watching back home. Go to Sam Mateo's favorite son. That's right. Eighth year in the big leagues. He's 55 and 64. But he's not had a lot of success against a team they grew up watching, and whether it's with the Rangers, the Orioles, I mean, you, you name it. Every time he seemed to come into Oakland, face the Athletics, he struggled. And I think from the A standpoint, they hope it continues. In the game last Thursday, the A's combined in the game had three walks score. Plus a couple of hit batters scored the 13 runs. That's something that they do so well as they force a pitch to throw a lot of strikes or a lot of pitches to they do throw strikes. They're usually ready to hit them. Donaldson it's a shot into the seats foul. Career numbers against the athletics five and seven and the ERA is over seven. 
Yeah. Most of those starts came when he was a member of the Texas Rangers. Foul. Interesting note on Scott Feldman. Throws the second highest percentage of curveballs in the majors. 31% of his pitches are curveballs. Only Josh Beckett from the Dodgers throws a higher percentage of breaking ball. So we'll see if that's the case tonight. Have not seen a lot of breaking balls no. so far tonight in this start. But that's a fastball and the cutter. So there's 69% with the two types of pitches. They'll throw a two seam and a cutter. So going both directions plus a four seam. That one hit very high in the air, shallow center field. The left center field where Kraus, again, the left fielder plays. Over toward left center field in this ballpark, so it's out to be Krause's ball, and that's out number one. So here's Vote. Vote hitting 361. Big night last night. Two for five with a home run and a double. Home runs are always tough to top as far as being impressed, but I thought his at bat against the left hander when he doubled was maybe just as impressive. Absolutely. And even at the end, a couple of runners on, got the three and two count against Sip and had a good bat against him as well. It's jammed here. Dominguez, the third baseman, is under it. Time now for a Ford right choice, and it's about Stephen Vogt. 375 and 80 at bats this month. How about that? He's hitting 361 in 148 bats overall. And you think about how valuable Stephen Vogt has been the last two months. Not only is he hitting 361, but he's played catcher, first base, right field, left field, and he's DH'd. So that's five different places he's played if you want to count. The DH. Plus, he's got a bad foot that he's trying to play through. I mean, that's a pretty valuable guy. You no, know, with, with the injury, and I think he, he said it best, and, and players know that they'll play the game injured, but he said, as long as I'm not hurting the team, I'll continue to play, even though I, there's, I'm in pain. And that's kind of the feeling. If they end up feeling they're hurting the team, that's when they shut it down and pretty much say, I can't do it anymore because I don't want to hurt the team when I have success. And, but the way he's swinging the bat, I'm sure Bob Melvin wants him in the lineup as much as possible, lefty or right. And it can't be a little bit of a painful injury. I mean, you watch him walk around outside <laughs> of the ballpark, and he's got a little limp yeah. going. So he's grinding through this. There's a lot of the ace players are right now. Norris, center field, and that'll drop for a hit. Now they had some action on it. And he will take it. A little bit towards the end of the bat, but as he did last night, a single in his first at bat served it to right center to drive in a run. Right off the end of the bat. Yeah. Do you know what turned out to be a, a big play for the Astros last night? When Stephen Bolt hit the ball to right center, should have been a triple to drive in a run. Instead, it was a ground rule double, and only one run scored as a result of the sack fly by Cespedes has tied the game, but at that point, the A's could have taken the lead. Reddick rolls and foul, and I think as it all worked through, I think it did cost the A's a run. Yep, exactly. Because there was a uh, check out my card because I remember it would have. Well, at that point, it would have been second or third, one out. Yeah. Well, it would have been runner third, one out, in a tie score, and then he would have scored on sets of this fly ball. That's exactly right. Yes, because. Yeah. Yeah, because Lowry would have scored on yep. the vote, which would have been a triple. Right. And then Cespedes hit the sacrifice right. fly that scored Lowry, but it would have scored vote because vote would right. have been at third base. So it did cost the A's a run. And a lead. They would have had at that point four to three, and then the tie Castro 
ended up hitting the home run. But who knows what would have happened at that point if the A's had the lead as far as bullpen maybe a little bit earlier, whatever. But uh, it did not happen, and Astros hit a whole bunch of home runs. Reddick foul territory for Castro. Castro squeezes it. Side retired. So a two out hit by Norris. He's stranded, and we're heading to the bottom of the second. It'd be Kraus, Singleton, and Dominguez. Ace Baseball on Comcast Sports in California is brought to you by Real Strong Redwood. Learn more at realstrongredwood.com. So the Astros with a 1 0 lead. They get another home run. This one by Marwin Gonzalez in the first inning. So it would be Mark Krause to lead it off against Jeff Samarja. Krause hit his fifth home run of the year last night and into the second deck. You know, when you're hitting under 200, it's like swing hard, hope to make contact. When he swings hard and he hits them, he's strong and they can travel. But I think what the Astros would like for some of these guys with the low batting averages and home runs, they'd like to see it average out a little bit more with just hits instead of the long ball if that's all they're going to do. Well, oh, that's what's funny too is all those statistics, individual statistics the Astros have, it all falls into that yeah. that hit a lot of home runs, don't do much of anything else. Because there's outside of El Tuve, there's just not a lot of high batting averages on this team. In fact, there's a lot of low batting. Yeah. But I, I've always thought, and simple man tells you, you hit 30 home runs, that's great. If you go to the plate 600 times, what are you doing 570 other times? And that's what Bo Porter, a manager, wants to see is consistency of a player instead of just the long ball and a sub 200 batting. I mean, you're, you're basically saying out of 10 at bats, if you're hitting 190, you're getting just under two hits every time you go to play 10 times. And that's just not good. Now, Tuve is totally different. Springer next to him is going to get better as far as average and home runs. Right now, he's hitting the long ball. Three and two. Grouse crushed it last night against Jesse Chavez back to back. I mean, that's his swing, and it went up the deck and kind of pulled it way up high in the second deck. Three two pitch. He was foul back. But Kraus, we've seen him a little bit. He really has a pretty nice swing. Powerful yeah. swing. You know, as, as, as a pitcher catcher watching this swing, if he's thinking about pulling it, don't give him anything to pull. That's the biggest thing. And unfortunately, on 3 1 last night, Jesse overthrew the ball and ended up right in his wheelhouse. The curveball, 3 and 2. 
And it was a late breaking. But you know pitch. what? I take it back. It's a different. He has two different fastball signs. Two normally is a curveball sign, but this is not a curveball. And maybe the one is a a two seam sinker. A two is maybe a cutter. Had a little bit of break to it back door, but not the 12 to 6 curve that he throws. So that's the different types of signs that Derek Norris is using. And as he said, it's okay for a pitcher to have the movement, but I need to know as a catcher. And that's probably why he has a sign for two and four seam fastball and cutter all of them. There's his fastball sign right there. Well, whatever that pitch was that he struck out cross on, it was a good one. Yeah, he's had a little cut yeah. action on it. And one time he just overthrew what was called the four seam fastball. That one's hit high. Cespedes waited for a moment. Now he trots in and he's got it. He may not have seen it initially. He stood there for just a second. Singleton is retired. This is what he uses the fastball. And over 50%, velocity 94. Throw it 68 percent of the time. That's pretty good with just the one pitch, but a variety of the pitches off the fastball. Yeah, and it's not straight 94 nope. either. Nope. It's got good action to it. So 0 and 1 to Matt Dominguez. Dominguez gets jammed. See, there's that. 95 mile an hour fastball, but it's really running in on Dominguez, and well, there's just not a whole lot you can do with it. Well, he hit a slider, a hanging slider inside part of the plate, but this ball jammed it. See where that hit all oh. that? Yes. It's lucky it didn't split in half. Donaldson has it. Flips to first side, retired. So good hitting for Jeff Samarjan. We're headed to the third here at Minute Maid Park. One nothing Astros. Legacy showroom on Saturday, August the 2nd. Sonny will be there taking pictures and signing items for fans after 105 p.m. A's versus Royals game. Be sure to stop by the Barron showroom at 4870 Dublin Boulevard and meet the A's young phenom. Barron's a legacy of elegance. You know those two guys standing there, those pitchers named Casimir and Gray? That's 24 wins. Mm -hmm. 12 each of the A's 65 standing together on the rail. There they are. What a nice story and on Scott Casimir and his comeback and he's fortunate to have him. What a 
What a trip he had to get back. Here he is right now. Yeah. He is back and pitching well. Eric Silgar's playing well. Over the 200. His batting average, using the whole field, playing outstanding defense. That one bounced straight to the first baseman. Singleton steps in the bat. Craig want to sit along a special congratulations to Liz and Travis Laduce. That's uh, Travis Senior Manager Digital Marketing for the Athletics. Now here's a name. This is right. a new daughter. Okay, okay, born yesterday to the Loduches Ripley Rocket Loduche. <laughs> and as Travis says, it's called Rip Rocks. So Ripley Rocket Loduche. So congratulations like to Liz and Travis. Travis, nice young man in the A's office, been there for a while, doing a great job. So their first baby girl. Congratulations. Ripley, believe it or not. One and zero to Jaso, who swung at the first pitch in the first inning and hit a soft line drive to Singleton, the first baseman. There's that curve and a good one. So maybe a few more breaking yeah. balls this time through the lineup. We'll see with Felton. That's a great point. First time through the batting order. Jason Castro mostly fastballs. And that backdoor curve ball. Five fly ball outs the first inning with the fastballs. And he likes some margin using the inside part of the play with the fastball and jamming the A's hitter. Just weak pop ups. Backing up is Gonzalez to get a good hop, and he was playing on the right side of second base, so Jason is retired. Well, that game in Baltimore Rays turned out to be a little bit of a wild one. Nick Markakis has just hit a three-run homer for the Orioles, so the Orioles now lead the Angels six to four through five innings. <laughs> Probably not over yet either. As the ball does travel in Baltimore. Usually the pitchers prevent a lot of that traveling, but not tonight. So Lowry goes after the first pitch. He's retired, and Scott Feldman has a three up, three down inning. Bottom of the third coming up. The Astros with a one nothing lead. Number one live streaming sports service is now available. Join the millions of subscribers. Jeffy Adam Market Game Live in True HD on over 400 devices. Visit athletics.com for details. So, bottom of the third, Robbie Grossman, TK Hernandez, and Jose Altuve here for the Astros.
Grossman hitting 190 with three home runs, 16 RBIs. A straight up defense. Okay. How about that? Yeah, that's uh, about as straight up as you could ever see. <laughs> it's kind of nice. To Let's look take out. a picture yeah. of that. Freeze frame it. <laughs> Maybe the spray chart is not big enough yet to uh, create a shift. Pretty soon we'll be seeing. Remember the, the the years when everybody was played straight up? Not anymore. You know, it's funny you think about as Grossman strikes out and you know, a good pitch by Samaja. Baseball goes through changes all the time and some have a larger effect on the game than others, but start thinking about this shift thing. It's a pretty huge deal. I think you're right. I, I agree with you 100% because from the hitter standpoint, it frustrates them oh. more than anything. Because a straight up defense, how many hits do you think Brandon Moss would have? How many more would he have? And and Jaso, some of the left handed hitters hitting into the shift with three to the right side. See, here's another straight up. And we don't have the information that teams have, obviously, but they're doing it for a reason. Because all the charts and graphs and whatever they have, information wise, well, there's a reason why they're putting these guys where they are. They wouldn't be doing it if, it if they didn't think it was working. Well, they call them spray charts, basically, and every ball, that ball hit right there by Hernandez will be charted as a two seam fastball hit to the shortstop. And they'll put a, a direct line from home plate to the shortstop. Ball hit the outfield. And that's why when we showed Josh Donaldson, all those gold arrows pointing all over the field. Well, for him, how do you really shift with him? Because yeah. he uses the whole no. field. And, you know, this may be a record. Three consecutive hitters in this inning without one infielder outfielder moving mm. to a shift. And I think, I mean, you, we've always seen the outfield shift some. Right. But now it's the infield that is doing it a whole heck of a lot more than they ever did before. So Altuve is retired eight in a row. Retired by Jeff Samarja after the Gonzalez home run. So the fourth inning's coming up. One nothing Houston. On Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Prism. Now your team can collaborate at a whole new level with video walls from Prism. Learn how at Prism.com. That's a big word, collaborate. Wow. Collaborate. <laughs> 
See that Adam? Elaborate. Jeff Bagwell. First baseman who some think will enter Cooperstown eventually. It was big here. What a big trade. Talk about a trade deadline. We talked about that the other night about Larry Anderson to Larry Anderson. The Boston Red Sox for a young kid named Jeff Bagwell. What a story he turned out to be for the Astros. Cespedes, Boss, and Donaldson, the heart of the order. Never could understand with Bagwell with that stance. He had some strong legs. You know, he just kind of a spread out, squat, and lift. <laughs> yes, he did. That was about it. There's a shot left field, and it bangs off the out of town scoreboard. Krause picks it up, fires to second base, and it pops off the glove of El Tube, and Cespedes just ran right past second base. And if El Tube catches the ball, Cespedes is out by 10 feet. Because he was running so fast, I guess he couldn't slide. But this ball, if it didn't knock down the wall, it sure sounded like it. And Krause knew it was over his head. He's going to play it off the wall. Sounded great. Hit off the out of town scoreboard. Bang. But the throw to second. Watch Cespedes. He doesn't slide. Altuve misses the ball. Cespedes spun off the bag. And, you know, I guess in hindsight, if Altuve just settles back, he tried to make the quick catch and tag. And looking at Cespedes, realized we just caught the ball. He's out easily. Let's hope he was just running too hard. He couldn't slide because, what a doubt. First of all, he was stretching what should have just been a single into a double. Moss toward the line, and there is Kraus, and that's out of warrants. Moss is not going to be happy with that at that. Yeah, that's strange. I'm not sure why he didn't slide. I mean, as he's running to second base, the play is literally yeah. right in front of him. He's staring at it. Well, to be probably telling me, yeah, I catch the ball, you're out. But, you know, about Brandon Moss, that's twice first pitch hitting. He's gotten jammed and softly hit a fly ball to left field. And I don't know that, well, just give Feldman credit for throwing the fastball and hitting the spot. At worst, Moss is hoping to pull the ball to the assessments. So, as a big leaguer, Ray, what is more frustrating? Getting jammed or rolling over on a pitch? And they may be equal. Well, but it, just from a where you really, it, it ticks you off. Well, yes, and you're saying without a runner in second, nobody else. Yeah, so just want to roll general. over then, but in general, that's the worst because you wait back too long, you get jammed, you hit a weak pop up, and <laughs> roll over. That means you're getting out you're too, getting far too far in front, front, and you're carrying the bat forward, <laughs> and all you can do is roll over and hit the ball weakly to the left or right side, depending whether you're left or right hand hitter. But had him all shaking his head, and you know, I, I think the one thing hitters realize that if it's a Pitch that you don't like, you don't have to swing at. And I'm sure Moss is probably a little bit upset with himself for doing that. Cespedes goes, throw to third. Close play, but Cespedes gets in. Well, so that's a big steal of third. Yeah, you know, and not surprising. We've seen it happen, and you can hear people yelling, there he goes, and cash to a perfect throw, but the fact that he got the running. Walking lead and Donaldson is a former catcher. Why are you squatting down? Boy, every time you see that, you enable the catcher to throw right over you. Donaldson should know as a catcher, the hardest thing for a catcher is to throw around or over a hitter. And Donaldson helped out by ducking. Stand straight up and force him to throw around you. Fortunately, it didn't didn't help. So the infield plays back. And the 2-1 pitch. Sinker low. Well, here's what I'm talking about. Now, as a hitter, you can stand upright. Watch Donaldson. As the ball's there, he knows he's running. He ducks. And so all Castro has to do is stand straight up and throw really over Donaldson. If he stands in the box, we've seen catchers actually try to throw over, throw the ball down the left field line. And Josh knows as a former catcher that that is a hard play. So, again, fortunately, it did not hurt. That uh, still in anyway. 
But this is a better angle because Castro is thinking there, and then Donaldson just accommodates by. And there's a perfect throw, fortunately, just a tad late with Cespedes getting in with the head first line. Actually, it happened here with the Angels that an Astros hitter stood straight up, and the catch for the Angels hit him in the helmet, and the ball went down the left field line, a two-run score. And he tried to throw over him, you know, with his conger or whatever catch it was, but it did happen here. And it was the best thing to do. So runners at the corners for vote. First pitch blocked nicely by Castro. Castro does a pretty good job blocking balls. Yeah. Oh, the runner third. Curveball anticipated move to his right. And you anticipate the break when the ball does hit the dirt and the curveball is going to break exactly the way that would do. Another ball in the dirt and vote takes it. So two and oh the count. So they've actually gotten a swing at two bad pitches. The curveball is the dirt both blocked nicely by Castro. And I think they realize Stephen Bolt has been a very hot hitter. Trying to get him to chase the curveball, and he's not so far. And that one is long and well played by Dominguez. He was playing even with the bag, and he leaped up and he made a terrific play, and it saved a run. But not only even with the bag cap, but off the line and could not have been played more perfectly. Right to him. The only one to the left side of the infield. And Stephen Vogt crushed it. But right there, timed his lead perfectly. And that's a tough one. Because he was doing his job. I think he's had it played perfectly. So it's up to Norris now. Donaldson made a good play by getting back to the bag and not taking off on contact. Otherwise, double play in the A's aren't able to do anything. Now have to do it with two outs. Norris with a base hit to center field in the second inning. And the first pitch, pretty good sinker there by Felton. Remember last night with a runner at second, Derek Norris with three to the left side of the infield. And he hit it just to the right of second. Now, Tuvi tonight, though, is not using the same shift with Norris hitting Feldman pitching. So, we're two of the second baseman playing. Last night, he was to the left of second base. The whole right side was open. And Derek Norris did a good job shooting it through the infield. The one and one the Captain Norris. Pitch count's pretty good so far for Felton. 48 pitches. Fouled straight back. And Norris got the pitch to hit. Seventeen balls, thirty-two strikes so far for Scott Feldman. Cespedes set third, Donaldson at first. Donaldson runs, and the ball's hit hard, and it is. Not by a lot. But Gallego checking it out with Marvin Hudson. Bob Melman's coming out once uh, Gallego started talking to him and he said, I had a foul, but it's hit so hard. Any part of the bag? Wow. To land that close to the line, I don't see how it could be fouled by much. Usually, if it's going across the bag, over the bag, 
or to the left of the bag. It's a lot more foul than that one is. So very, very close. Now watch where the ball lands. It's not where it lands. Let's go over the bag, but where it lands says a lot because at that point, where it lands just foul. <laughs> I hate to say that ball is very close, if not fair. Couldn't have been any closer. Again, it's where the ball landed. But Donaldson was running. Two strikes, and maybe it was just trying to draw for old Cespedes. But Norris hit the ball and hit it hard. So another one two pitch coming up from Feldman. Donaldson not running this time and ball drops low two and two. That's a split finger fastball that Feldman likes to throw especially with a couple of strikes. Well, it's a good job not swinging at it. We'll see what Norris gets on two two. Foul back. Another fastball. Maybe a cutter. Yeah, two and four, same cutter. Curveball, split. Well, the hole on the right side, you throw the cutter. Derek Norris will be a little bit late and shoot a ball to right field. Matter of fact, he did it Friday night in Arlington almost. The ball in right field, a play that Aaron Sebia made, deflected over to Odor. That same ball right now is a base hit to right field. That one's drilled to center. Hernandez going back, still going back, and he's got it. PK Hernandez, nice running play. And so the A's do not score. Bottom of the fourth coming up. 1 0 Houston. The season with Chevy free parking Tuesdays. Park for free at select Tuesday home games and get a ticket to the game for only four dollars while supplies last. Act on this special discount purchase online only. Underline online only at athletics.com slash Tuesday and use promo code Chevy. Free parking Tuesdays driven by Chevrolet. It's always nice nights to come out and watch baseball on a Tuesday night. Park for free. Some of the KIPP students. We talked about the KIPP charter schools last night. Celebrating the 20 year anniversary of the first school, which was right here in Houston. Celebrated that last night. Got a note uh, an eclipse that uh, A's general manager Billy Beans going to be here as a speaker tomorrow. Is it? I think it's tomorrow evening. So that was the report I read. So bottom of the fourth inning and.
Marwin Gonzalez steps up. Gonzalez hit a home run off the foul pole down the right field line in the first inning. And that's it. The only hit, the only run that the Astros have received. Gonzalez was one for four last night. And this is what happened. Look at the fastball straight. One and one the count. So it's been this year. Morrison with Seattle, Scope and Machado with Orioles, Carter with the Astros, Gonzalez with the Astros, and the starts made by Samarja. But of those four previous starts, he has only one loss. Two wins and an A's win and the other. Foul straight back. On the season, Samarja well, coming into this start combined 138 innings pitched, so he is well on his way to pitching 200 innings this year. Early career with the Cubs is pitching out of the bullpen. Mm -hmm. well, as the old saying goes, they talk about that's a horse. He's he loves to pitch. He's he said he's kind of the old school. He does not want to leave the game. He wants to stay in pitch as long as possible. And that start last Thursday, as I mentioned, through 101 pitches, but eight innings could have gone deeper. Had given up the one run that was caught it. The A's had 13. So no reason to send him out for the ninth. So ahead of the count one and two is Samarja. So this is the second time through the lineup for Samarja. He's allowed just the one hit. That was close, and Samarja thought it was a strike. He's hoping it would catch the inside corner. Well, they Dan, have. Maybe Derek Norris didn't have to move much, and I think umpire Doug Eddings might have been thinking he's going to move more. He once he saw the spin, like his body started to come up to call the strike, did not though. And that one hit hard to foul. It's Gonzalez may have swung at ball four. Yeah, that's a case of a hitter expanding his strike zone and thinking he's going to get a fastball. He committed to swing at it regardless of location. And you're right, though. You lead off an inning, you have a chance to walk. Sometimes you're going to make it out by swinging at a bad pitch. Marja actually did the walk. It's a chance to get him out with this one. So here it is, 3-2, and it's hit hard again. Five. So good battle here between Samarja and Marwin Gonzalez. Tenth pitch in the at bat. And fouled again. Folks down the right field line. Getting good foul ball action. Although that one rolled away from the wall. The cloudy skies after the rain this afternoon. If we were in Seattle, that whole area would be open. It's glassed in here. And a swing and a miss. Nasty pitch from Samarja. And he gets his fourth strikeout. That's a heck of a split finally going to a three and two and pitch usage. The order first time, second, third. I mean, it's even great that a pitcher can say one through the order third time. So he backs off on the fastball and see he throws more sliders as the game goes on. And will incorporate the splitter. Not a 
greater percent, great percentage, but that time after Gonzalo fouled on everything, finally threw him a splitter, struck him out. Chris Carter struck out swinging in the first inning. It was a good slider that he struck out on. Carter's had a big month of July. He's one of those guys who's not going to want to see the calendar turn. He's got eight home runs. He's got 19 RBIs, and he's hit 307 in this month. In fact, he has the best slugging percentage in the American League in the month of July. Huh. Coming in with 21 home runs overall and 49 RBIs. You know, putting up those numbers, regardless which team he's playing for, there's that process called arbitration. That he's going to make out very nice. Yep. First three years, it's pretty much control of the club after three, and arbitration after six, free agency. Sometimes, sometimes earlier the Super Two. It looks like Chris Carter will go to arbitration for the first yeah. time this year. And he's got some consistent power numbers to take it to arbitration. That's the key for a player really to have three consistent years in your first three. Three two and a take by Carter and he's got a walk. We were not off for it a lot of bad pitches three and two. We saw with Luke Gregerson in Oakland, he would not offer it his slider. If you don't swing at his and plus this very hard slider by Samarja, he wouldn't offer it. So with one out and a runner aboard, here's Jason Castro. Castro hitting in the cleanup spot. Takes a fastball for a strike. The Orioles are still leading the Angels. It's six to five. Through six innings in Baltimore. Actually has two pretty good hitting lineups. Going yes it is. In that head. ballpark. Yeah, exactly. The Mariners are leading the Indians five to two after six innings. And the Indians trying to stay afloat. They're six and a half games behind the Tigers and in third place in the Central. And again, with at this point in time, the Angels with a terrific record and they're the number one wild card team. There's a whole bunch of teams that are fighting for the second wild card, which affects those teams coming up Thursday at three o'clock no Pacific. Because when I mean, you look at the East, Baltimore, Toronto, New York, Tampa Bay, they're all in the race. Detroit, Kansas City, Cleveland, Seattle, the Angels. I mean, those are non-first place teams that are all in it. Same thing in the National League. Washington with a half game lead over Atlanta. Milwaukee with a game and a half lead over St. Louis in the Central. And the Dodgers with a two game lead over the Giants in the West. So all close races there. Two and two to Castro. Fouls it back. Mark Krause is the on deck hitter. It's a tough for teams that think they have a chance to make it a postseason. Uh, there's a wild card, second wild card division. It's going to be tough for them to trade away key members of the club. And that is a fair ball. It's off the glove of Vote. Castro's going to be safe, or did it hit the bag? 
I think both. I think both kind of smothered it at the bag, but it hit the bag. And either way, it stayed close enough that Carter had to stay at second. Hit hard by Castro. And so let's see if there's a. Uh, he really did not maybe get a glove on it, but then it hit the bag and popped into the air a little bit. If he did get a glove, it was just a little bit of leather, but it goes as a hit for Castro. Yeah, check the right here. Yeah, just, yeah, he did. He just did. off and went straight down, which fortunate because if he doesn't get a glove, that might have been second and third. So a walk and a hit with one out. That's blocked by Derek Norris. Castro was 0-2, but that's the count even at 2-2, and, and that's when he hit the ball hard. So it's all about the count. And a nasty pitch there, Samarja. 95 miles an hour, and it just dove right out of the strike zone. Watch this movement. Turbo sinker. Wow. And that is a turbo because it got right in front of the whole plate and straight down. Could duplicate that pitch or throw that pitch all the time, you'd never be hit. Right on the outside corner. So Klaus sees three pitches, he strikes out for the second out. Right, two great sinkers and nailed the outside corner with a fastball. Exactly where Derek Norris had set up. Height, good. Corner, good. Great pitch. So two away here, Singleton. Singleton hit a fly ball to left field in the second. He was 0 for 3 last night. The youngster getting a chance to play pretty much every day. Big part of the future for the Astros is John Singleton. Hits that one toward Lowry, who scoops it up. He'll throw across the diamond in time. Side retired. So the Astros strand two, and we're through four from Houston. One nothing Astros.
your photo to CSNCA Fan Photo. Put your name down and your hometown down for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast. That's Jeff Hanover from Weaverville who sent in this photo. And Jeff, we appreciate it. Memorial Day with my boys, Louie, <laughs> Cody, Jimmy, and Tony. My boys. Sounds like one of those mafia movies. <laughs> Louie, <laughs> Tony. So here come the A's in the top of the fifth. Reddick, Sogard, and Jaso against Scott Feldman. Feldman was able to escape damage in the fourth. He's at first and third, one out, but the nice defensive plays kept the A's off the board. So Feldman's been good so far. He has walked one, he has struck out one. Signed a three year, $30 million contract. And I think probably raised eyebrows a little bit, only because maybe we we'll That one to right into the corner, and it is gone. And just like that, we got a brand new ball game as Reddick Homers. I thought it was interesting, Kai, but did a pregame show on the radio with Josh Reddick, and he said, you know, I'm probably never going to hit 30 home runs again. But just maybe the fact of not thinking about it. And look what he does tonight. Playing center field, fakes a bunt first pitch, and hits a home run. So he wants to use the whole field, which he's been doing that. And this time gets out in front of a fastball and hits it down the line, and it's a new game. Sogard with a shot. It's knocked down by Singleton, and then as it was rolling away, it hit the bag and bounced right back to him. So a tough break for Sogar, but a nice play by Singleton. And a nice swing by Josh Reddick on the, maybe it had a slight cut fastball on the inside corner, but a line drive, unlike the home run he hit last weekend, last nice Saturday, in order to the high towering fly ball, and there's a hanging slider. This one down in the corner, and very happy. Run through the top. So here's Jaso. Jaso has lined out and he has grounded out. He rips one to right field. Grossman coming in and it will drop in front of him for a hit. So hit number five for the Athletics. Uh, Jay so hitting the leadoff spot, but never been your prototypical leadoff hitter to take a lot of pitches. He knows that he wants to swing the bat, gets a good pitch to hit. He's going to let it go. So Lowry steps in, a strikeout and a fly ball to center field so far for Lowry tonight. First pitch is low with a breaking ball from Feldman. That's what I was saying about Feldman, Ray. I think the contract raised some eyebrows, not because he deserved it, didn't deserve it, not, but, but simply because the Astros went out and spent yeah. quite a bit of money. Yeah. Remember last year, the Astros' payroll was 26 million. Wow. <laughs> it's up to 44 million this year. But the Astros wanted a veteran guy. Come in here, give them good innings, maybe build around them a little bit, anyways. The thing is, and again, nothing against Scott Feldman. Happy he got it. If you spend $10 million for pitcher, you know you're not going to win. You have to have that kind of investment. I mean, it's one thing if if a pitcher is going to put you over the top, like with the trading deadlines now, with uh, certain pitchers maybe going to a club to help them win. But for a team that's in the building process, The general manager, Jeff Luno, he's of course with the Cardinals. And now general manager here with the Astros and putting together a very good young team. Good 
but he's going to have to be a patient man, and I'm sure yeah. that he is. But again, with with Feldman, with his club, be in contention in three years. Who knows? I mean, they're predicting by 2017, but that's going to be on us very quickly. And for a team to develop into a, a top team in the division that quickly, who knows if it's going to happen? But yeah, nothing. Scott Feldman has been around and had some good years with different teams, so I don't blame him for jumping to the contract if also No. No way. Last season they did not win their 43rd game until August 26. And this, this is 43 and 63. And, and this is July the 29th. So yeah, so almost a, a month away before they got them. Jason runs and the 3 2 pitch is called the ball. Close pitch and Marvin Hudson's hearing it from the Astros dugout. But it's a walk and the A's have two on and one out. Castro started the throw but held up after it was called a ball or did not get the strike call. See, Brett Strom got smart. He put a sweatshirt on. So his last name doesn't show. I think that's good. I mean, we're indoors, nice, comfortable night. But Brent Strom is a pitching coach for the the Astros, former major league left handed pitcher. Well, he's made a lot of trips to the mound. <laughs> yeah, right. So it may not be a bad idea. Yeah. You pitched with the Indians? Yeah, that's what I thought. So here's Cespedes. Cespedes has hit two laser shots to left field. Both doubles. And you'd like to see some elevation on some of those line drives that he's been hitting. Especially the last one that banged off the out of town scoreboard. This is a little bit similar to Fenway Park with the green monster. Although the Crawford boxes seem awfully close but the out of town scoreboard manually operated. In left field. That left field wall. 315 down the line. The wall itself is 19 feet high. Cespedes hits one high in the air to right field. Grossman has it. Jaso's tagging, but he's not going to go. So that's the second out. And a big out for Feldman. But during batting practice, Cespedes with Bob Melman pitching to the group that Cespedes was hitting in, took a baseball, put it on the outside, just outside of the, the hitting zone of the plate, and he wanted Melman to throw him there so he could concentrate on hitting ball to right field. And one thing Chili Davis said, it's okay to think that way, but you have to take the approach. Unfortunately, that time it looked like he opened up, and as a result, didn't drive the ball to right field. And maybe you think that he's going to get a pitch that he could hit to left field the way he did the two previous. So here's Moss. Moss swung early in the count his first two at bats. A couple of fly balls to left field. Maybe he's going for the Crawford box. Maybe that's why he was hitting the ball left field. Maybe that's why Krause is playing it. Like he's trying to go that direction. But the two that he has hit wouldn't match up with both of them. Stranded out to reach the boxes. And Krause is playing actually a more conventional left yeah. field spot. But boy, it must be strange for a left fielder because you turn around and that wall is right, right. there. Probably play a little bit more shallow than what he's doing. Yeah. One and one the count to Moss. Come on, 
Dominguez, the lone infielder on the left side. Gonzalez up near second base. One one pitch is hit in the air again to left shallow Kraus coming in still coming in and he makes the catch. So Moss is retired the A's get a run on Reddick's sixth home run of the year right down the right field line. So we're going to one one game as we head to the bottom of the fifth. is brought to you by Discover RV in Lodi. Come and check out our grand opening and summer savings and visit our website at discoverrv.net. Here's a good look at downtown Houston. With the A's and the Astros tied at one. And Matt Dominguez leading it off, fouls it into the upper deck. Dominguez, Grossman, and Hernandez, the bottom three in the Astros lineup. Fastball jams Dominguez. And that's out number one here in the fifth. Well, you said it right, and Samarja throws so hard, he's gotten in on Dominguez twice. And the difference last night, in the hanging slider up over the train tracks in left field, but Shut down innings 80 percent 20 25 and well, what he has done since Gonzalez the second batter hit the home run. A couple on last inning including a walk but. He is really running the fastball hard inside of the batters. Fastball. Away to Robbie Grossman. We're seeing more and more too the pitchers who kind of turn their backs a little yeah. bit and. King Phoenix does it but Samarja. Not the complete turn, but just enough there. That a hitter can almost see the number when Samarge is back. He has to see the number, probably can't spell his name, so that makes us. <laughs> Who can? I can't. That's why I think everybody's calling him Shark. Makes it easy. You know? Close, but outside, two and one. Yep, there picks up the target and here comes his name and number picked up the target never really loses sight of the target. And a strike call two and two. Yep, likes the high strike that is Doug Eddings and. Let's say the upper part of the strike zone. That one not close. So a full count to Grossman. Just two hits for the Astros and only three base runners. Home run by Gonzalez, a walk to Carter, a single by Castro, and that was an infield single.
And the 3-2 pitch is lined left center field, and that's a hit. Gosman can run, and he's going to make a big turn and then put the brakes on. And probably a smart thing is Cespin has made a pretty good throw back into the infield. And I got to the fastball count, got a fastball, and went to the opposite field, elevated to about belt high. But I think the reputation of Juan Juana Cespedes is starting to spread rapidly. Because that's a ball that you might think about going for two, especially with an outfielder having to go as far as Cespedes did. But he has thrown some lasers and he threw a perfect strike to second. So with a sinker ball pitcher, keeps the double play in order. Runner goes, swing and a miss, throw to second base, is not quite in time on a close play. Had to be the slide and had to be around the tag because Derek Norris very quick from behind the plate. Put a good jump. And the feet first slide. Mike got the foot in. Very quick throw. And a quick tag by Sogard, but we've seen a lot of times with it. Now hold on, Samarja don't walk. Oh. I'm going to say he's. He told him right away I'm yeah. going to challenge. So they must have got a decent yeah. report. From Adam Roden down underneath. Yeah because he took a little bit. Of time coming out. So Marja had the ball. And usually if there's a question. It actually happened right here with Tommy Ball. That got the ball back. Sogard did and didn't get a chance. And the guy was out a second on pickoff. And ended up scoring a run. Which turned out to be a big run. But. There's the quick throw and there's the tag and that's Jim Joyce the crew chief at second. This is a better angle. He was blocked a little bit. Joyce was and this is a shot they're going to look at. If he tagged him there, he's out. It's just a matter if he got him on the backside. But not much Jim Joyce could do to get in a better position to make the call. Showing it on Diamond Vision, and they're showing the tag. And again, if the tag is applied, the foot was not on the bag yet. So it's just a matter of if the tag had already been applied by Sogard. Evidently, they thought yes. Yeah, he did. This may at yeah. least tell you when he was able to actually. If his foot's not on the bag, he got him right there. That's that was the key. The quick tag by Sogard. Well, again, if a team's going to challenge it, generally they can feel pretty good about yeah. it, especially taking as long as they did. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Joyce looked at the gentleman's name, looked at his name tag. Hi, I'm Joe Joyce. Nice meeting. He shook his hand. That's all the really umpires have to do is just stand there and wait for New York to make the call. It's really nothing there. Yeah. Most gentlemen right there can do. Uh, Jim, being a personal man, he is. He's to say hello, introduce himself properly to the person who is in charge of holding the headsets. Well, they're looking at it a long time. Yeah. If we can see when a tag is applied and where the foot is, that's uh, Sogar made the sweep tag and made it quickly. And the fact that he had to reach back to his right as he was down on one knee and then take the tag back hard and quick. Could be getting something here, folks. See what it is. Called them safe and they kept it that way. 
tells me there may not have been a, a good angle. Inconclusive. What's the call on the field? We have him safe. Stays. Because I bet they could not see the, the, the tag as we looked at yeah, the exactly. different angles and how, had the tag been applied before the foot was on the bag. This one's hit high to left. Cespedes. And it is off the wall. Bounces back towards center field. Grossman's going to score. Hernandez is going to be standing at third. So Kike Hernandez with a booming triple to left center field. And it had to be close to getting out. And Bo Porter's going to come out. He may want to know where it hit. Well, the real problem after a delayed a long time for a review is what the pitcher is able to do with the first pitch. Samarja did not make a very good pitch. Similar pitch really that was hit by the home run Gonzalez on a fastball right in the middle. Yeah, so it hit about halfway up. Well, it really had two guys going after the ball instead of one playing the carom off the back. And by that happening, it allowed Hernandez to get to third. So here's El Tuve, and El Tuve lines in the left for a hit. Hernandez trots home, and it's three to one Astros. El Tuve goes after the first pitch, and he picks up his 33rd RBI. And that's why you challenge because that quickly a matter of two pitches and it's two runs and Samarja both times trying to go inside to Hernandez and Altuve and it did not work. Hey Hernandez was very bold going down the line. It was a base hit but he was halfway down the line instead of going back to make sure the ball dropped. You know what to Ray here if you're Altuve you know the pitchers a little ticked off. Yep. This is probably a good time to go. That's right. And plus, he's got the high leg kick anyway. Altuve, 42 steals, and Vote had to dig that one out. So Marwin Gonzalez. It's his third at bat. He's got a home run and a strikeout. Two runs in for the Astros. Oh, two day. Let's push back. Well, this is where El Tube can cause a little havoc. 42 steals. He's only been caught five times. He's leaning. And Samarja just holds it, which actually can be just as good as a good move over to first. Not running. And the pitch is outside. It's got to be one of the hardest things for a pitcher is when things aren't going your, your way. You still got to hold that concentration right. and make quality pitches. El Tuve runs. Pitches a strike, throw to second base, and they got him. What a play by Sogar. He hung in there, and they throw out the American League's leading base stealer, Jose L. Tuve. And a streak ended in Oakland. They had 28 consecutive, but this throw right on the bag, short hop, and Sogard stayed right there and made the play, head first slide, and that in itself is what made the play good for Sogard. The fact that he stayed in, but also the head first slide. If he's sliding feet first with the spikes, Sogard cannot put his body in front. He's actually blocked him off the bat.
But what a great play by Sogard to take the short hop and get the out. Two and one now to Gonzalez. So indeed, a nice play by Sogard. So there's so many base dealers that slide head first. Really? That your hand versus cleats. You're not going to see a lot of guys standing in there. Very, nice. Very accurate. So a couple of runs on three hits for the Astros. We're on to the sixth inning. Houston three and the A's one. in Bay Area Baseball, Comcast Sports Dead California's Authentic Fan Fridays at the Coliseum. It's coming Friday. Get a ticket at our value deck behind home plate, an Authentic Fan T-shirt, a cheer card, and a $6 food and drink voucher, all for one great price. The best deal in Bay Area Baseball is Comcast Sports Dead's Authentic Fan Fridays. Astros 3, A's 1. It's the top of the sixth inning. Be a day game tomorrow, and then the A's will be home. And Friday night, well, that's a big night, right? You got Authentic Fan Friday, you got fireworks, and remember, first pitch is scheduled for 6:35 on oh, Friday. Like that. Half hour earlier, mm -hmm. do the fireworks, I guess. So remember that 6:35 first pitch Friday. It'll be the A's and the Kansas City Royals, and that'll be the first of a 10-game homestand. Three against Kansas City, three against the Rays, four against the Minnesota Twins. So our first look at the Royals who are fighting for a postseason spot right now the Royals are four and a half games back of the second wild card. So they're yeah. in it. Yeah, right. They have enough talent to yeah. get hot at the right time. Good pitching staff. Good bullpen. Donaldson hits with a mile in the air. Dominguez. And then he's called off by Gonzalez. They were standing right next to each other. And that's the first out. So Donaldson 0 for 2 with a walk. And that'll bring up Stephen Cope. But the Royals are last in the major leagues in home runs hit. They have hit just 61 home runs this year. Well, at the beginning of the season, and hardly had any. Mm -hmm. So they've really come a long way considering. But you're right. A few guys on that team anyway that are very capable of hitting long ball. So they don't hit home runs. They lead the league in stolen bases. Yeah. But have. I would say maybe offensively they've been a, a disappointment this yeah. year, but the pitching's pitching pretty darn standing. good. Yeah. Starters are good, bullpen is lights out. So it should be. A good week in the baseball, and then you got the, the Rays who are playing great baseball coming in next week. 
And then the Twins finish it out in four games. Like the Rays are winning again tonight. Beating a good Brewers team. Three to one in the eighth inning. Tampa Bay has won nine out of the last ten. Right field. Grossman on the move. He's going to get over there and make the catch. So two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. That Angels Orioles game is now tied 6 6 going to the bottom of the eighth inning. We're keeping a close eye on that one. Seattle still leading the Indians 5 to 2 in the bottom of the eighth inning in Cleveland. First pitch to Norris is a fastball high. Blue Jays are beating the Red Sox 3 to 1. They pounded them last night. Was it 14 to 1? Blue Jays did, so they're trying to beat the Red Sox again. Toronto's won three in a row. So it's getting that time of year where you start keeping a little bit of a closer eye on the out of town scoreboard. Yeah, like the A's game 106 and you play 162 game schedule and tells you 56 remaining after tonight. And 56 will go fast. But the reality is, it's you're still not even two thirds of the way through the season. That's right. There's a good look at the out of town scoreboard. White Sox beating Detroit nine to two. Detroit with that five game lead over the Royals in the Central. What if Hawk was talking about it, put it on the board in the seventh inning? He scored did. seven. I bet he did. <laughs> he said, "Stony, put it on the board." <laughs> Rangers beating the Yankees again. Four to one in the fifth inning. Texas won last night over New York. Right past Mike Gallego. As we said, sometimes gags will make the play and make a little effort. Other times he just plays Joe Cool and lets it go by. At that time, he went with Joe Cool. As long as he can figure out that it's not going to be close to him. Here it is. Let's get up. Smooth. He realizes it even when he doesn't try to feel it. He hit too hard to make a, <laughs> make a fool and try to hurt himself. Or take a chance of hurting himself trying to catch one. Two and two now to Norris. 81 pitches for Feldman with two outs here in the sixth inning. Norris has Bay City's one for two. He also hit a line drive to center with two on and two out in the fourth inning that was caught. Breaking ball blocked nicely by Castro. Well, you might ask why is he doing this? Uh, not a runner on base. Two strikes though. Ball gets by on a wild swing by hitter. Gets by the catcher. He could advance to first base. So Jason Castro actually gives him a chance to get a little work in on blocking balls in the dirt. He's done it nicely tonight. And that one misses outside. Felton was ahead in the count. He ends up blocking Norris. So three walks and one strikeout so far for Feldman is Reddick will hit. He tied the game his first at bat or his last at bat hitting a solo home run. And the Astros taking another lead but. Just to see if he gets a chance to even come close to doing the same thing he did. Home runs are hit usually on mistakes and. Definitely what happened in one to Reddick. Got a good pitch, but a little bit of a mistake inside to him. 
Feldman missed outside. Here's a good look at that home run. It was last inning. Cut right in his wheelhouse. Pulled his hands in nicely and down the line over the fence. Speed pitch is low, so Feldman falls behind the Reddick 2 0. And these are the kind of at bats for a hitter. It's a Reddick who just hit a home run. Thought process, what are they going to do to me this time? Are they going to give me something that I can pull? Do I have to think about pitches outside, off speed? Pitchers and catchers think about it, but hitters also remember what they did the previous time. This one's popped up. Castro coming back. It's going to be into the seats. That's good news because that pitch was outside and he just got under it, maybe thinking 2 0, oh, take a chance, try to pull one of the seats, especially with two outs. Oh, his power in that short portion left field, lefties can go that direction just as easily. Maybe before the night is over, Branham also will do it because he's hit four we try balls to right on that field, and <laughs> the total distance has been very, very short. That one lofted into foul territory. Dominguez over, and he cannot quite get it. Look at the catcher's been Got it. How about that? That's Not only great. does he bring a glove, he brings his catcher's mitt. Well, he's behind home plate, and he's dressed up. Just yeah. got home from work. Decided to go to the game. Everybody's standing up around him, <laughs> diving, <laughs> reaching, and he doesn't move. And actually, the young kid's probably happy because it might have dunked him on the top of the head. <laughs> catcher's mitt it's right. wins out. That's again. right. Probably hasn't even been broken in yet, but he made a nice play. That would hit to left center. Now that's hit well. Headed toward the Crawford boxes, but it's caught at the warning track by Kraus. Thought it had a chance off the bat. And so, so did Reddick. He's looking at it wow. in disbelief. Couple of home runs early. Gonzalez for the Astros with the foul pole. Chick fil A's for everybody. And then it was Josh Reddick, his home run, giving him six of the season. Tied the score at one. The controversy will play the challenge on the stolen base. Hit and run missed. And the throw to second is, is reviewed. Called safe. Next two pitches, there's a triple on a fastball. Very, very hittable by Hernandez. And the very next pitch, the lead off hitter, Altuve. Pull the hands in as both times the margin try to go inside to the two hitters did not work out and Reddick hustling in the right center field and he's got it. Chris Carter is retired. Have you ever seen a look on a hitter any different than what we saw with Josh Reddick after he threw out the left field? It, it's I thought he hit it better than yeah. it ended up. Left the bat and Reddick got the first base and in disbelief.
that the ball did not carry farther than he thought. Good swing. Look at it. Like, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, he had a great approach and <laughs> it barely if ever just made the warning track. Yeah, I was thinking it's gonna go in that little area back there where the Crawford boxes stop. Go around the corner there. That's 362 all the way to the back in front of the A's bullpen, but across the box is something like 20 feet out in front. On one, one to Castro, make it one and one to Castro, who has grounded out and singled. Each team with five hits, there has not been an error in the game. There has not been an error in this series. Some marges pitches. Next one will be number eight. Strike and it's two and two. Fastball running away from Castro. Good pitch right on the outside corner, a little cut to it. Yep. And that is strikeout number six for Savarja. Same pitcher to the Kraus back in the second inning. The number two. That's called cutter outside corner. Throws Castro, and that's that's a pitcher's perfect pitch there. Can't think about it. So Kraus steps in. Kraus has had no luck with Samarja. He has struck out twice, once swinging and once looking. And the first pitch off speed drops in for a strike. The Angels are coming to bat in the top of the ninth inning, tied with the Orioles 6 6. Must be walk off time for the Orioles. They're pretty good late in the home park. Yep. Weaver and Tillman started that game, but there's a lot of runs scored early. Good fastball, and it's one and two now. Crowds. 94 mile off fastball up in the zone, tailing away from the left hander. A little bit late with the swing. He's trying to jerk the ball in the right field, second deck again, like he did last night. Not getting the pitch to do it tonight. We'd have a 3 2 in his first in bat. We've got the outside cut fastball for strike three. Two two to Kraus. And that one dribbled up the third baseline. It's a fair ball. They throw quickly to first to get Kraus and a three up, three down inning. For Samarja, we're moving to the seventh inning. It'll be Sogar, Jaso, and Lowry. Astros leading three to one.
top of the seventh inning. Feldman back to work. He's got 88 pitches. He'll face Sogard, Jaso, and Lowry, but there is action out in the Astros bullpen out in right center field. And Feldman's first pitch to Sogard is a big curveball that stays outside. Sogard has grounded out twice to Singleton, the first baseman. A much different guy tonight, Feldman. He was knocked around pretty good in Oakland. But one start later, he possibly made a few adjustments. Well, Jerome Williams did last Friday in Arlington, Texas against the Athletics, getting the spot start called up to make the start for Ron Washington. He got another start too. He's going to another start. They should. Show what he can do besides a team like the A's, especially with the numbers the A's had against them before Friday night. That's Josh Fields who pitched last night. Sogard hits it hard, but right at Gonzalez, who takes one step to his right. And that's out number one. So we got a great photo for you, folks. Check this out. This is the 1997 Castro Valley Little League. Call it the Majors, the White Sox. Jason Castro, front row, second from the right, and his brother Ryan. Top row and his father Tom was the coach. It's a good looking group right there. The White Sox from 1997. Castro Valley Little. It's good. Looks like a pretty good team. Well, if one of them got to the big leagues, then that <laughs> automatically makes yeah. it a good team. Not only made it to the big leagues, but from Castro Valley went to Stanford. Not a bad move. Well, the last couple of winners finished his degree. That's even more special. In the air towards center, and Kike Hernandez has it. So Jaso is one for four, and now Lowry will hit. So Lowry is 0 for 2 with a walk. Struck out and hit a fly ball to center field. Dominguez, couple steps to his left, reaches down and grabs it. Side retired, so a very nice inning for Scott. Feldman. Seventh inning stretch coming up. 3 1 Astros.
This one is at the 105 p.m. game Saturday, August 2nd against the Kansas City Royals. That afternoon, 10,000 fans will receive La Potencia t-shirt presented by NetSuite, which pays tribute to A's left fielder and two-time home run derby champion Juanes Assessments. For information on tickets, visit athletics.com slash tickets or call 877-493-BALL. That this coming Saturday as the A's return home for the Friday fireworks. Saturday, La Potencia and a lot of baseball coming up. So Jeff Samarja in his first four starts with the Athletics, seven or more innings in each one. He's starting out at the bottom of the seventh tonight. Fastball inside to Singleton. Singleton, Dominguez, Grossman here in the seventh. Singleton has hit a fly ball to left field and he is grounded to short. He's 0 for 5 in the series with a walk. Two 0 pitch and he was ready to rip, but the ball tailed outside 3 and 0. And a strike. Have you seen Nolan Ryan? No, his no. son Reed yesterday said his uh, dad and mom flew in yesterday following Cooperstown, okay. but then had to go back to Fort Worth for some function. So they just came in, and of course, he is working with his son. Nolan Ryan is. He is now with the Astros. Executive advisor is the title for Nolan Ryan. He's well, seems to die in the business and the baseball operation. He can. Uh, so from one team where they've retired his number and have a statue to another team where they've retired his number. Not well then. He'll have an impact here. Yeah, I think he will. Three two pitch is low. That was a nasty pitch. Yeah I did not swing at it. <laughs> That's the amazing thing. Could have very easily been called a strike. So a leadoff runner and it's Singleton and here's Dominguez. Well, you know they say a pitcher will tell you or by the way he pitches if he's done or not. Samarja is not done. No. He, he just happened to make two bad pitches following the. Review at second base on the attempted steal which turned out to be a stolen base but. I mean, he's throwing as hard now as he did at the beginning of the game. And plus, he had to. The fact that he never wants to come out of the game. That's a nice combination to have. Good stuff and the desire to stay in. Another quick throw, and it's getting close over there. Singleton has a big lead. Doesn't necessarily mean he's going to take off, but he's got a big lead. Does have the lead, but it's one way going back to the bag and. And both tying him on the elbow with a hand already on the back. Dominguez takes a long look down at. Third base coach Pat Listash. And Samarja runs it right in on Dominguez. Dominguez has gotten jammed a couple times tonight, and it's because of pitches like this. Well, and they're staying in, and they almost swung, had the ball hit him in the hip. There's that much movement on the fastball inside. So he can go inside, run it laterally, and it can also go down. Which makes it just as difficult to hit. Well, all that and lots of velocity.
And now it's 0 and 2. Showing off a pretty good move. Grossman, the on deck hitter. His bullpen is quiet. You know, before two strikes, it's one thing, but you think of uh, two quick strikes. Not going to be doing much because it's not that single thing. It's a straight steel candidate. Samarja though, maybe seeing the big lead and maybe throwing over on his own. That is a fastball inside. Again, broken bat again. Samarja drops it. They'll go to first to get the out there. He was ready to go to second, yep. just could not pick it up cleanly. And he would have had him too. Probably would have had a double play. Yeah, that's what a pitcher thinks coming back. And the follow through. He actually turned, ready to throw before he caught the ball. And he knew it. And he had a chance to get a double play. But as he followed through and then had to quickly come back and you know, all the while trying to catch and throw, and you can see where Singleton was and and he caught the ball, should have had time. So here's Grossman, runner in scoring position for the Astros. High right, pop up foul. So 97 pitches for Sabarja. Glove of Norris, and I think Norris is going to be real happy with that. He well, that watch out of the ball takes off. It's it's like a cutter, and one that he probably could have backhanded. Watch as it takes off on him, and, and it's almost as if he was crossed up the way he was prepared to catch it, and then had to go quickly to his right, see him put the glove up, and then have to turn it, and just to not get it cleanly into his glove. That's not one. To block, he wanted to try to catch and he couldn't do it. And that one's wow. inside. Samarja wow. thought it was a strike. <laughs> I think everybody did. Adam, did they rule on the ball? So yeah. Doug Eddings yeah. making sure that everybody knows he's in charge. <laughs> That's a big bit because instead of one and two, it's two and one. And that one he didn't stay on for sure, but it breaking back towards the strike zone. Infield is in, not close, three and one. I don't know what you want me to say, is what somebody just said. So three and one is the count. And that one hit very high. Right field, Moss over, and it's into the seats. So now the count is full. Kike Hernandez is the on deck hitter. So Dan Otero starts to throw. See where Samarja goes with the 3 2 pitch. Strike three call. Man. I think Grossman knew it. Yes, he did. He grabbed the outside corner. And that's a huge strikeout. Back door again. And there's your back door cutter, slider, something. And Grossman was fooled. Maybe thinking inside, stayed outside. And as soon as he followed the ball in the catcher's mitt, 
He knew it. And that's a huge strikeout, especially with the infield in. So here's Hernandez, two outs, everybody goes back to normal spots. And the fastball runs inside. Hernandez had a big hit in this game. He tripled off the wall in left center field, knocked in a run in the fifth, and then he scored. That was the first pitch after the review. And there's a line drive, and it's going to be a, into the corner, and it's going to be a double. And it's going to be an RBI for TK Hernandez. He's had some pretty good swings against the Yes. He's been aggressive. And aggressive enough that he's been able to do that, especially with a slider that stayed up or an eight pick that stayed up. And that probably was the slider and it stayed up and down on the corner. And so Mark has got to be kicking himself because if he handles the ball off the bat of Dominguez, and those are the little things, instead of a possible double play, it turns out to be a out at first. Runner goes to second in the scoring position, and the noise struck out. Grossman hung a slider to Hernandez. So a leadoff walk. And the fact that he was able to stay on without a double play, getting him off the bases, and gives up four. So Samarja leaves. He leaves trailing four to one here in the bottom of the seventh inning. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and break. Experts. Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet California it is brought to you by Xfinity, home of the most live sports, and by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability, and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. So Jeff Samarja, six and two thirds innings. He leaves trailing four to one. 104 pitches tonight. Well, the guy standing at second base, Kiki Hernandez, has done a lot of the damage. Yes, he has. And this guy, the first pitch, you have to be concerned about him. And he had a first pitch off Samarja. His last at bat, driving in Hernandez after Hernandez a triple. Change up to Otero, so he's aware of that, and he drops it in for a strike. Otero pitched last night through just 14 pitches. Seven and one on the year. We went two thirds of an inning. We put the hit and the run. El Tuve one for three. He's two for seven on the series. His hit in the fifth inning extended his hitting streak to 11 games. And now there's 150 hits on the year. They're going to walk El Tuve 
and pitch to Marwin Gonzalez. So I guess you fall behind in the count to the league's best hitter, at least average wise. Well, he's tough to pitch to also because he, he uses the field and aggressive. You try to pitch him a certain way and you said the best last night, he shoots the ball to right field. Well, this is a home run, the first one that Dan O'Terra had given up. One of the Crawford boxes, the Tube Slider home run. Similar pitch that Dominguez hit last night. A little bit deeper than one out Tube hit in April. So here's Gonzalez, two on, two out, a run in for the Astros here at the bottom of the seventh. Gonzalez, a home run, a strikeout, and a ground out. He's two for seven in the series. First pitch is right there for a strike. Interesting setup for Marwin Gonzalez. He holds that bat and holds his hands down around his belt. Now he does raise it a little bit when the pitcher starts his motion. And he gets him up there, but very low to start with. It's almost a relaxed setup, relaxed support, and then as the ball is coming, it kind of tightens up, which you typically aren't going to do with that with bat. You don't like to be this part as a catcher, though. That got him mass in the left shoulder. Right above the catcher's number, the foul tip. And that's how little can change the direction off the bat with the foul tip. Missed the glove, hit the body. So one and two is the count. Bounce slowly to Lowry. He charges. He's got it. Throws and they just get Gonzalez. Side retired. So a couple of walks and an RBI double. So we're on to the eighth inning. Four to one, Houston. Coming up on Friday, this Friday, August the 1st, the A's take on the Kansas City Royals. Fans will dress up as their favorite superheroes and music from iconic superhero shows and movies will accompany the post-game fireworks show. It's presented by Sunrod. Fans can watch the show from the outfield grass, but as always, on-field capacity is limited. Get your tickets today at athletics.com slash fireworks.
So four to one, the Astros lead the A's trying to make it two in a row over the Athletics. And a new pitcher. It's Josh Fields who we saw last night. And Fields is pitching extremely well right now for the Astros. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change, tune-up, and break experts. Two and four with a 4.19 ERA. Lots of strikeouts for Fields. And he is not allowed to run in 11 straight appearances. So you can have a hot hitter. You can have a hot reliever as well. Pretty good outing for Scott Feldman. Seven innings, five hits, just one run. And he threw 95 pitches. Inside corner, a strike 95 miles an hour. In fact, you look at Feldman's line through the seven innings. One strikeout, 15 fly ball outs, and five ground balls. And those fly ball outs were of the weaker variety. Yeah. I mean, they, they just of... were not driven. Right. And that's the big difference whenever a fly ball pitcher, because we talk about Chris Young all the time with the Seattle Mariners. There are times that these hitters, for some reason, can't drive the ball, get on top of the ball. It happened to Jerome, Jerome Williams actually to start this road trip last Friday. So one and two to Cespedes. He'll be followed by Moss and Donaldson. Two doubles tonight for Cespedes. By fastball, and that's 96 miles an hour. And Cespedes swings and misses. Elevated fastball, very difficult as Castro wanted it elevated. He did it perfectly, Fields did. And with the inside fastball thrown that hard, not much of a chance to do anything with it. So one out for Moss. The Angels and the Orioles are through 10 innings now, and it's still 6 to 6. Speed pitch at 78 miles an hour. So in two pitches, we've seen fields go from 96 miles an hour to 78. Yeah. A one and one to count. Moss, three fly balls to left field. The Mariners beat the Indians five to two. Iwakuma got his ninth win. It was a four-run fourth inning for Seattle. That was the difference in the game. Fernando Rodney got his 29th save. He might be running out of barrels. <laughs> Should have one extra one. He shot that one at the bottom <laughs> of the eighth right. inning. Anna. Shot it into the Angels' <laughs> dugout, and you knew, you knew what was going to be happening. You just knew. High fastball swing and a miss. And the Mariners now 55 and 51. That's the first of a three game series. And the elevated fastball, Brandon Moss not able to get to it. So two and two. Fields wanted another high fast. He wanted to throw that out 200 miles an hour if possible, and that's not. And Scribner getting a lot of work lately and puts the game last Thursday that Samarja started. Went one inning. Well, it's pitched on the road as well. Foul back to the screen. So full count to Moss. The last hit for the A's was Jaso's one out single in the fifth inning. Another foul ball is. Fields keeps pumping that fastball in there right around 95 miles an hour every time. We 
get another one right here. Wow. Shallow left field. And Klaus has it. That's got to be four sevens. That random loss is going to be scratching his head tonight. So two away here in the eighth inning, and Donaldson hits. Donaldson 0 for 2 with a walk. And remember on Friday night, total for the game against Jerome Williams and the Rangers, the A's 17 fly ball outs in that game. That was just the 16th here. Just something about the pitchers and maybe the late movement getting on the hitters and Late on the heels, whatever, but too many uh, easy fly balls. And Donaldson fly ball on the left and a pop out to third tonight. Ball is inside. Oh, into the seats down the left field line. So Fields trying to go through the heart of the A's order here in the eighth inning. And a one two and that's off speed and stays high. Now last night the A's had three runs on nine hits. Tonight, one run on five hits. Big hop to the shortstop, Gonzalez. And that's a three up, three down inning. So, indeed, Cespedes, Moss, Donaldson go down in order. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Here's our game summary brought to you by your local Toyota. Run for Reddick. Scott Feldman pitched extremely well. A couple of big hits for TK Hernandez and for the athletics they just have not been able to get a clutch hit. They're 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position tonight. So 4-1 Astros.
as they come to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. New pitcher is Evan Scribner. When it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up. Your oil change, tune-up, and break expert. So Scribner comes in. And Scribner, like Otero, pitched last night. Pitched one inning through 12 pitches. So Scribner will try his best to keep the deficit at three runs. The Angels did not score in the top of the 11th inning, so the Orioles come to the bat in the bottom of the 11th. That's the closer, Chad Qualls, for the Astros. What was it a couple of years ago, 2012, that the Orioles had this unbelievable record with extra inning extra record? Inning record. Yeah. I mean, just off the charts. Well, then we need them to do that tonight. <laughs> They deserve a walk-off, don't you think? Yeah. Carter hits a high pop-up. Lowry back. He's got it. So Chris Carter now 0 for 3, and that'll bring up Castro. Castro ground out a single and a strikeout. First pitch to Castro is in there for a strike. Castro was the tenth overall pick in that 2008 draft. Interesting. If and I think they maybe say I read that last year they. Kicked around the idea of a contract extension for Castro a little bit. Nothing happened. And on three pitches, Castro strikes out. So that's out number two. High fastball. I think the biggest thing for him, of course, we've talked about me from Castro Valley, but spent the time between here and the Bay Area last two winters to fulfill his college degree. And that's always an accomplishment for a player because. Four years school, you can be drafted out for your third year, but a lot of times players are drafted professionally, don't go back and get their degree, but he decided to do it. So that's a credit to him. And as he said, getting back into the study mode after <laughs> well season of Major yeah. League Baseball. And so but he's done it and congratulations to him. Get his degree. Mark Krause is 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Krause with five home runs, 16 RBIs on the year. A good fastball there right on the outside corner from Scribner. In the ninth inning, it'll be Vote, Norris, and Reddick, and they will face Chad Qualls. And good fastball. Kraus was late, and that's a pretty good inning for Evan Scribner. A couple of strikeouts. So the A's need three to tie and four to take the lead as we head to the ninth.
play of the game, Kike Hernandez, and this is what happened following the challenge at second base. First pitch hitting. He missed the hit and run, caused the challenge, and then he also hit a double down the line. So really, if you look at what Kike Hernandez has done tonight, he had a triple. First pitch following the challenge, which was upheld, and then a double play ground ball back to Samarja that might have been a double play. Nobody on base. Instead, runner gets a second after leadoff walk in. Hernandez drives him in. Getting a lot of playing time with Dexter Fowler on the disabled list and taking advantage of it. So it's four to one, and Chad Qualls, the closer, comes in. He's got 11 saves in 13 opportunities. Qualls was signed to a two year contract in the offseason. A little experience to that bullpen, and now he's closing. A veteran, 35 years old, his 10th year in the big leagues. Remember, he started his career with the Astros and had some very good seasons with the Astros. LJ Hose is now in left field. There also, last night, Qualls was in a bullpen ready to come in, but Sip was able to get out Stephen Vogt. Otherwise, Qualls would have been in the face Cespedes. That did not happen. And coming in tonight with a perfect lead for a closing three runs. Qualls was part of that World Series team yep. of 2005 for the Astros. The big part of their bullpen. And their manager. Former second baseman and former consultant to Bob Melvin. Living in Houston and in town at the park now, of course. So lives in, living here. And it's been out the park. Telling all those stories back from the 70s and just coming out to manage the Astros in 05, taking them to the World Series. One, two pitches in the dirt. And it's good to see Phil Garner. That ball yeah. hit the umpire. You got somebody. That was a two strike block by Castro again that popped up, and I think you're right, hit the umpire. That one hits a right field. Headed for the corner. Grossman is over there, and it's foul. The boat just kind of got out in front, hooked it a little bit. Got a breaking ball from Qualls in just out in front. There's the hanger, there's the swing. Did not have the distance. Good swing anyway with a couple of strikes. They're chanting again. Some fans Somewhere. here. Stephen Vogt, you can hear them. Well, gonna miss. He struck him out. Lots of movement on that 94 mile an hour fastball. Well, fourth inning. This was big. First and third for the Athletics. Only one to the left side of the infield. The Bengals. He jumped and robbed Stephen Volt. And then Derek Norris right behind him. Volt looked like he had a hit. And Derek Norris. That might have been a fair. It was called foul. Then went straight away center. And there's that guy Hernandez again. Right before Towles Hill, able to bring the ball down and. And they say the balls in front of umpires aren't reviewable, right? Well, that was a close play. It was ruled foul, and fourth inning was big. Other than that, the A's offense a little bit dormant tonight. Good pitch there to Norris, 0 and 1. Norris a single, a line out. You just saw that. It was actually right after that close ball that Norris hit down the third baseline. That he hit the ball well to center field, and then he walked in the sixth. Last hit was Jaso. Dominguez charges, throws, and the throw is late. And he pulled Singleton off the bat. Catcher's wheels, man. He was forced Dominguez. That, that took a little bit of a bad hop, too. And Dor Norris had the third baseman playing deep. A long run to come in, but Derek out of the boundary box quickly. Dominguez trying to make a spectacular play, just could not do it. Rick Norris can run surprisingly fast for what they call a catcher. And 
He'll take the infield hit. Gives him a couple for the night. I think you'd like to have the ball hit to center field that we referenced to the left or right of Kiko Hernandez. Might have been a different story. It's a nice game. So here's Reddick, and Reddick fouls it off. His foot rolls out to Qualls. He did the ground and with his right foot. Alberto Cayaspo has come out into the on deck circle, so he will hit for Sogar. A one pitch to Reddick. Driven into left center field. Holes on the run. He can't get it. It's over his head off the wall. And firing into second base on a close play, and the ball rolls away from Altuve. So Reddick has a double. Norris stops at third, and the A's are in business here in the ninth inning. Well, it's amazing the way he hit the ball in his last at bat. Had that confused look on his face. This time takes a low sinker, a line drive that Hose just throws his glove up. Derek Norris had hesitated because he did not want to run into a double play. The ball came right back to the center fielder again and a strong throw by Hernandez and a strong hard slide by Josh Reddick not taking anything for granted. And with a feet first slide, oh, awkward going around the bag at first, almost missed the bag. And it, you know, Tuvi, as he did with Cespedes, trying to make a quick tag. So here's the pinch hitter, Kiaspo. First pitch foul to the screen. So Sogard was 0 for 3. Just in case he has tie this thing up. Or maybe even take the lead. Gregerson starts to throw a little bit. So one and one to Kiaspo. Kiaspo is two for four as a pinch hitter this year. And a strike on the inside corner. <laughs> and that's the pitch that Samar just screamed that Doug Eddings about, or at least let it be known that he thought he had a strike. And ball did come back very well by Qualls. The Greg Maddox specialty. Ducked it into Cooperstown Sunday. Jay So will hit next. One two pitch. And there's a line drive base hit right center field. Two runs are going to score, and we got a 4 3 ball game. And we're going to get Billy Burns to pinch run, probably for Kiaspo. And Billy Burns will get that opportunity as Kiaspo. What a huge hit. And it's a one run game. Kiaspo, welcome back off the disabled list. And gets a high fastball after a two seam fastball for strike two. And Kiaspo, a big hit, stayed back and drove the ball to the right center, scoring two easily. And just as important, Billy Burns, who is wearing the number one for many years by Campy Campaneros with tremendous speed. Is at first base. Two run score. And there's the one run game. Eric Qualls blew the game in Oakland. And Larry hit the home run and came back on a Saturday afternoon and won. Trying to do it again tonight because not much activity by the athletics other than the home run by Reddick in the first eight innings. Only five hits off film. So the speedy Burns out there to pinch run and Jaso steps in the box. It all started with that infield hit by Norris. Oh, really? It's a perfect scenario for a base stealer. Left handed hitter to block the catcher. Good speed. Burns was thinking about running. He bounces it to Singleton out at second and no throw to first. 
Burns took a, a, a step or two like he was going to go, and then he stopped. So Singleton gets the out at second base. That's the second out. Now he might have been trying just to read what kind of jump he could get on the first pitch, not knowing that Jaso was going to offer at the first one, and maybe Jaso was trying to hit the gap between first and second. And really, Jaso, as a catcher himself, realizing that if there's a possible stolen base threat, they're going to get a fastball first pitch, pretty good pitch to hit, but he beat it in the ground. So now two outs, and here's Lowry. Lowry is 0 for 3 with a walk. First pitch to Lowry. It rolls past Castro, and that's going to get the tying run to second base. Castro tried to backhand it. Oh, it threw away, overthrew it. The pitch was located. It's supposed to be outside, but it was inside. And he barely got the glove on it. So you want to be a catcher, huh? Uh, he hit the home run. Lowry did to start the round and the comeback in Oak. Outside and now it's 2 0. Cespedes would be next. Here's what he did. Right now, Lowry would take a Blue pit somewhere. 2 0 pitch. Here it is. And it's hit foul left side. So 2 and 1 to Lowry. And the A's have scored twice on three hits here in the ninth inning. And they have the tying run at second base. Gregerson. And that almost hit Lowry. I'm not quite sure how it did not. It was going right at him and he just got out of the way. And don't think you could say take one for the team. That would have might have broken a rip because it was going right at his right rib cage. Able to get out. That's inside. Probably look for something outside of the two same variety. Usually the pitch inside that hard's a purpose pitch. Not purpose to try to hit him, but maybe set up the outside corner. High and foul. Up behind the A's dugout. So now full count. Ball's going for a walk. Lowry taking a step back, and everybody on its feet here at Minute Bay Park. Is ready. Inside he walked him and Cespedes is going to hit. I think he's just overthrowing it. Right? He is overthrowing, trying to throw it 95, 100 miles an hour. He's not that type of pitcher. And now Cespedes, if he could drive one in a gap or. <laughs> Maybe elevate one instead of off the Crawford box out of town scoreboard, put it in there. But he cannot do what Qual was trying to do, try to swing hard, just swing easy because he has so much power anyway. And Cespedes swinging the bat well. He's got two doubles tonight. So 21 pitches for Qualls here in the ninth. And Cespedes, a little flat of right field. That's going to drop for a hit. Here comes Jason. Throw to the plate is late. And the A's have tied it with three in the ninth. Just a blooper. 
right over the infield, but enough to get the tying run home. Well, as strong as he is, try to go inside and jam him, and that is as beautiful as a hit you'll ever see. And with two outs, Jason did not have any hesitation taking off on contact. And Grossman this time, pretty strong arm. And a nice throw, but not enough time. And almost overthrew it. And you want to Cespedes again coming through. In fact, just a reminder, that game that Qualls blew in Oakland, it was Kiaspo who tied the game at 3-3 three and three before Reddick won it. This time he comes up with a big two-run single. So we'll be back. New pitcher coming in for the Astros. By authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. Well, the A's have tied it with three in the top of the ninth. And they're still batting, so it's going to be Moss facing the left-hander, Tony Sip. Sip a big workload last night. Especially the ninth inning when he almost coughed it up. He's almost came back, so he is coming in to make an appearance. Number 34 for the left-hander. Ended up walking two in the ninth inning with two outs. Went three and two count. Stephen Dolph before he fired out to center field. So Brandon Moss, how appropriate would it be for him to pull the ball to left field after hitting four to Kraus? Four fly ball outs. It was a bloop by Cespedes to tie the game. And the A's remarkably have come back in this game down by three in the ninth inning. Clemens and Barris both throwing. So Lowry, runner at second base. And six first pitch to Moss. It's a slider that's inside. Some A's fans cheering loudly behind the A's dugout. Let's go Oakland. See a lot of green and gold behind the A's dugout. Down beyond it, and they're cheering very loudly. So one and zero to Moss. And now oh, two and zero oh. to Sick, can't believe it. That boy, Doug. <laughs> Doug Eddings telling the Astros dugout to calm down. Why didn't you just say I missed it and then calm down? Because that's a pretty good pitch. So maybe that will force Sip to have to make a better pitch and one that also be able to handle. So two and oh.
And that one belted to right down the line. It is foul. Well, he got a better pitch. How about a hanging slider? Just a little bit too much on the inside. And Brandon Moss would hit four fly ball outs to left field. Waited and just hooked it foul. Plenty distance. Field shifted toward right, outfield shifted toward left. And Moss takes a fastball inside three and one. Donaldson to follow. Corner 93 miles an hour, so the count is full. Lowry at second, Cespedes at first. They'll take off. Well, they're staying inside too, and almost inside and down the middle. Castro looked like he just wanted to throw a strike. Well, I can't believe it. Two blown saves against the Athletics in this one year. Three two pitch here it is and it's rolled foul off the foot of Moss came right in again did sip. Stay inside whether intentional or not but pitch is left in there. So we'll do 3 2 again. It is a shot. Base hit. Here comes Lowry, and the A's have taken the lead. Altuve with the shift. Dofort could not get it, and the A's have scored four times here in the ninth inning. Uh, Brandon Moss got me at it so hard. I don't know that a shift would have helped anyway. And Chad calls again as Tony Sip threw him a fastball and Brandon Moss just scorched it. And the shift on didn't matter because look how Ted at Toby's playing. But almost if he caught it, took him into the right field seats. And remarkably, the A's have come back to tie and now take the lead. Unbelievable. The Bull Porter's coming out. And Jose Veras is coming in. So the A's have scored four times here in the ninth, still batting.
hitting. You know, Brandon Moss, another fastball, three and two from Tony Sip. And after hitting floor four, weak fly balls left field. Now Tuvia in shallow right, go for the ball, passed him so quickly. And first the three and two count. Lowry on the move, able to score easily. And you know, look at this inning. The, the walk by Lowry was huge because it did put a time running scoring position before the bloop by Cespedes to right field. That's that's an unbelievable, unbelievable record there. Just 10 wins trailing after seven. That's just something you normally don't see in today's world, especially relief pitchers. So here's Jose Varis to face Donaldson. Donaldson 0 for 3 with a walk. Cespedes at third now, Moss at first. Swing and a miss. I only think Justin Marge is happy for a number of reasons. If you look at the numbers for Jose Veras. 24th game back with the, the Astros, but. And Samarja, by not being able to turn the double play, of course, that allowed an extra one to score. That was four to one instead of three to one. But when the A's tied it, of course, now taking the lead, he's off the hook completely. That was a big extra run at one time. And that was belted to the center. Hernandez going back, still going back. It's over his head. Rolls up the hill. Two runs are going to score. And it's now seven to four. The A's take the lead. And they add on to the lead here in the ninth inning. At any other park in baseball, that is a three run home run. Look how far this ball goes. Hernandez playing a normal center field, and Josh Donaldson absolutely crushes it to the base of Towns Hill. And it's 436 to the top, and it rolls up, and that is. And the warning track at center field, and the warning track's got to be well over 400 feet. And up Towns Hill, and, and Edmonds able to get it back in, but Josh Donaldson, in the 23rd time the A's have batted around, comes through with a big two run double. And Stephen Boat, who struck out to start the inning against Balls. And Boat's going to get intentionally walked. So, with all this going on, in Baltimore, Manny Machado hit a home run, and it was a walk-off home run, and it just happened moments ago. So the Orioles beat the Angels seven to six on a 12th inning Manny Machado home run. So how about that? So those fans were cheering him and loudly in Oakland. Maybe they're probably cheering him even louder now. Probably, probably time to let that go. I, hey, believe me, I agree 100. percent It should probably never even continue in to Oakland. Let it go. Shouldn't have continued in Oakland, but it did, and I agree with you. Maybe the offseason will do that. So the A's in the first eight innings had five hits total. In the ninth inning alone, they have six hits. And, and they have scored six runs. Unbelievable. Runners in scoring position in the first uh, eight. Well, they didn't have a hit with runners in scoring position, but here in the ninth, they got four. And they're not done yet. The 11th man to bat is Derek Gorse. And Norris has a couple of hits, including the single that got this whole rally started. And this one bounced in the hole. Gonzalez goes quickly to second, and they get the out there. Side retired. A stunning turn of events here in Houston. The A's score six times in the top of the ninth inning to take a seven to four lead.
It's the ninth when 20,000 fans will receive a Tony DeRosa Hall of Fame bobblehead. The former Oakland manager who got in the A's to the 1989 World Series Championship has been inducted to the National Baseball Hall of Fame and will throw out the ceremonial first pitch before the A's take on the Twins. To purchase tickets, visit athletics.com slash tickets or call 877-493-BALL. Still think Terry Steinbach should catch the ceremonial first pitch since he was a member of the 89 team and Tony managed that team. Tony's in the Hall of Fame, but we'll see what the marketing department says. So the A's with six runs on six hits in the top of the ninth inning to take a seven to four lead. Astros just rolling along. These bats were quiet. And the Astros had a feel like they had this one in the bag. Yeah. Uh, also, Evan Spridman came in in the eighth inning, just blew away Castro and Kraus. And he is the pitcher of record. Drew Little can shut down the Astros in this inning. Feldman's got to be thinking, I had a great start, seven innings. Put up one run. A chance to make up maybe for some of the losses in the past against the A's. Yeah, let's hope it just gets a no, no decision. That he already has. So Nick Punto comes in the game at second base. So Doolittle, first pitch to Singleton is a fastball outside. Singleton, Dominguez, and Grossman. Doolittle looking for his 16th save. That's a strike. A little bit reminiscent of the game last year. Chris Young hitting the three run home run of the ninth inning against Veras on a hanging curveball that shocked everybody. And tonight, the A's again, a big ninth inning. Score six. Good pitch there, a fastball right on the outside corner. So one and two. Ball two and two. Fastball outside, so now full count. Three-two pitch, no chance on a high fastball. Singleton swings and misses. That's, That's ten strikeouts for these pitchers tonight. That's where you want to get aggressive hitters because run didn't mean anything. It looked like he was going to swing regardless of the location of the pitch, close enough that him to be swinging. But who knows? Might have been floating outside. But big strikeout for Sean Doolittle. Considering the location, velocity definitely was there. So one away. Here's Dominguez. Fastball for a strike. The AL ranks for Doolittle. Strikeout walk ratio, <laughs> opponents batting average. You could go on and on with that list. That list could be a lot longer if you wanted it to be. Long as his beard. Strikeout percentage, no surprise there. Six to nine strikeouts. Popped it up. Punto is underneath, and that's out number two. Talking to Alan Ashby and Bill Brown of the Houston. Television side, and they were commenting about Sean Doolittle. We mentioned about the third walk the other day, and all the strikeouts. And nobody can believe the, the strikeout to walk ratio off Sean Doolittle. But it's, it's basically a one pitch pitcher now, fastball, which he elevates perfectly. Derek Norris does a good job lifting 
the target up when he gets ahead with the two strikes. Little flare. Put to out. And coming in and sliding is Moss. And who caught it? Punta. Punta caught it. And maybe a good way to end a crazy game. Nick Punta had to avoid Moss. He made the catch. And that's how this ball game ends. Uh, hard to have communication like that, but nice slide by both. One to catch, one to get out of the way. So what a comeback by the A's. Again, six runs in the top of the ninth inning. Cespedes.